I want to show you how I organize my notes inside of Notion. I've been using this tagging method or this tagging strategy for a while. Now, it isn't exclusive to Notion, so if you don't use Notion, this video can still be of value. And honestly, I do want to not just exclusively make Notion content, but this strategy that I use is really, really useful inside of Notion, especially with sorting. My system is pretty simple. It consists of two factors. It consists of tagging and relating. When faced with a new note, my tagging and relating sort of follows this XYZ assessment. Is note about X? If not, can it be filed in drawer Y? And what note Z is it related to? Starting with X, this is what I call a focus tag. For example, time management. Time management would be under the umbrella of productivity. Productivity is the drawer Y in question. If the X tag has been used previously, the Y tag is automatically assumed. However, if a note falls only under productivity and no focus tag, and this can happen, it will only be tagged with a Y, AKA a broad tag. From here, I sort my notes. Within this productivity drawer, we have notes that are just about productivity and notes that are about time management or maybe mental models or task discipline that directly relates to productivity. Now, when it comes to the Z element, this is what I use to sort the drawers. If a note has five different relations and it is filed under productivity, just a Y tag, and no other note has five relations. Say the next one down has four and the next one down has two relations. The one with five will be at the front of the drawer and the one with two at the back. Now I'll show you how I execute this and figure the sorting in Notion. So I went ahead and created a mock-up of my notes strictly in regards to tagging. So I have my note one, the children of note one, and the parents of note one. You can see the children of note seven. If I go down to note seven, note one should be a parent. Yeah. So really quickly, if you're not familiar with notion relations, the way you make this simple child parent relation is like this. You're gonna create a property called children and go down to relation. Make sure you choose the database that you are currently in. So this one is called automating tags in Notion. And I'm gonna make sure it says sync both ways and it should populate with a parent over here. And I would just rename this to parent. Now, as for tagging, let's go into note one. And I'm gonna add a property called tags. I do make sure that for tags, I'm not using more than one, but in some instances, it might be the case that I really try to restrict myself to just one. So I create a multi-select property. Now let's say note one, like the example is time management dot productivity. I don't wanna make this purple. All right, so I already have my focus tag and my broad tag in one place. What I'm gonna do with this formula is extract this productivity part of this tag so I can know that this note is in the productivity drawer. Let me actually put X here and this would be instance Y. After I extract productivity from this tag, I wanna return how many children this note has, put it at the front of the drawer name so let's say note two is just about productivity. Make sure it's all caps. And I will also make sure it's purple just for consistency. So the first instance I have is that if property X is empty, I wanna make sure this drawer is empty. If empty property tags X, then empty space. If not, let's say not empty to test it. These indeed are not empty. Okay, delete that real quick. And the next instance is that if in property X, spell that correctly, contains a period and children is empty. 
So if it contains a period, that means it is an X tag. And if children is empty, so empty property children. I want it to say a dot zero plus replace all in property X, replace all lowercase a through Z. And you can do that with this matrix. I'm gonna replace it with an empty space. Now let's see how this works so far. The only instances we have are if children is empty. So let's empty that. So it looks like it's a little bit messed up and I am going to fix that right now. Instead of replacing just A through Z, I'm gonna replace A through Z with the dot and the underscore and add a space here. Now in the next instance, if in that property contains again a period, so that means it is an X tag and the length of property children is greater than zero. That means children is not empty. I want it to say a dot plus. Now instead of saying a dot zero, because in that other instance, it said a dot zero because a signifies that it is an X tag. Zero signifies that there are no child relations. Now I want this to count the child relation. So it's gonna go a dot plus give me a number. To do that, I'm gonna format the length of the following formula. Replace all in property children, anything that is not, so using this caret, not a, sorry, the caret should be inside, not a comma, anything that's not a comma will be replaced with a empty space plus one plus an empty space. And I'll go over this in a moment, don't worry. Plus I'm going to replace all in property X. That is lowercase letters plus period plus an underscore with an empty space. Now we have a dot two because it is an X tag and two children are in this property. If I were to take away note four, it should say A1. Take away note two, it should say A0. Say there's three, it should say A3. Now, how did I find the number of relations in this property? I'll show you this formula isolated over here if you're curious. Let me show you what property children looks like on its own. We have note five, note three, and note 14 separated by commas. So what I'm doing is saying, get rid of everything in here. That is not a comma. I wanna be left with these two commas here. And then I wanna count the number of commas and then add one. The reason I'm adding one is because if I say, give me the number of commas, it would say two. Down here, it would say one. To do this, I'm gonna say replace all in property children Using this here, go caret, comma, replace this with an empty space. Now we have all these commas here. Find the length of these commas. Now that's giving us how many commas there were. And then what I wanna do is add one. So that's giving me how many relations are in that property. Now, if I wanna format it into text, I would put format at the beginning. And that's what you're seeing in here with format, length, replace all, prop children, everything that is not a comma plus one. So now we have every instance that works for an X tag. We have an instance that is zero, one, two, and three, and so on. Let's do the same thing with tags just labeled with productivity. For this, I'm going to use pretty much the same arrangement. Let's actually copy this up to the next if statement, put it in here. Instead of if contains a period, I'm gonna say if it does not. So not before contains, if it does not contain a period, that means we're left with these types of tags. And is empty, let's say this productivity note, 
has no children. I want to return it with not A0, but B0. And instead of replacing, like we had to do with that X tag, all we really have to do is return the tag. So prop tag X and add parentheses at the end. So if this note had nothing in it, it would say B0 productivity. Now why A and B? When I go to sort a drawer, like I showed you in the example at the beginning of the video, I want everything that's just labeled productivity to be in the front and all the files in the back. And then all of those notes labeled productivity in the front, I want them sorted by the most children to the least children. To do this, a simple sort is required. So I'm gonna say drawer is descending. This shows me productivity at the top, B0 and A3. Let's put in the next condition to really show how this works. So I'm actually gonna copy this again, paste it in. If not, contains this dot, except instead of being empty children, I wanna say N the length of prop child or children is greater than zero. I'm gonna say B dot, come back to finding the amount of relations. So I'm just going to copy this here, paste it in, and then add a parentheses at the end. So if I were to come down to productivity, it would show me that it is just a Y tag, so it's labeled B, has four children, and you see how it jumps before this B zero. Let's do the same thing for a note that has three labeled productivity, and it jumps up below this B four. You can do the same thing with time management. This one has no children, so it says zero, A zero, and it will keep sort of filing down like this. Now I go in and I create a filter for productivity. Honestly, I create a list for these, and then I just sort it by drawer descending, and I filter it to make sure drawer contains productivity. Now, if I were to go back to default view and maybe add nutrition.diet, and then one just for diet. Make that brown. I would go in, probably just duplicate this, rename this to diet. Make sure the filter drawer contains diet. You can also go to properties and include this little tag to make sure it's right. So the top is productivity, that is just labeled productivity with the most children down to the least, and then X tags from the most to the least. Do the same thing in here. And yeah, that's pretty much how it works. So I really hope this was useful. And as always, I'm going to provide a link down below to this page, the formula, and I will include that counting relations formula as well. And I will see you guys next time.